Hi guys, Andreas here and welcome to another video. Today, we are talking about the Sigma 28-70 to f2.8 lens and why I chose it over its competitors. So about a month ago, I was hired to shoot a wrestling event, a local wrestling event here in Montreal from Main Event Wrestling. You can check them out at mewwrestling.com. Uh, very cool show. Uh, it was my first time shooting an event like this and I had lots of fun doing it. Hopefully I'll be doing more in the future. Now, given the fact that for a wrestling event, the action can move quite quickly and I knew I would need to adjust focal lengths very quickly, uh, I knew I needed the versatility of a zoom lens for full frame. So there's the 24 to 70 2.8 G Master. There's the 28 to 75 Tamron F2.8. The Sigma 24 to 70 F2.8 Art Lens and this 28 to 70 from Sigma f2.8 contemporary lens. The other little wrinkle during all this is that uh, right a little bit before I was hired, Tamron announced the release of the G2 version of their zoom lens, as well as the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8. Now, those lenses were enticing, but I wasn't sure they were going to be out in time for the event, which happened on September 24th. Therefore, I knew that my choice would come down to the other four lenses, right? Because I'm not super rich and I don't have millions of dollars to spend on gear if I still want to have a home, I uh, decided that if I was going to buy a zoom lens and invest in one to use for this event, it needed to be something versatile enough and useful enough for me to use in areas outside this one single event. So I knew I didn't want anything too big or too heavy. That kind of ruled out the G Master, which is freaking massive. It also ruled out the one that hadn't come out yet, the 35 to 150, because the thing weighs like eight elephants. To a certain extent, it also ruled out the 24 to 70 f2.8 art lens because of its weight. So that left me with the Tamron 28 to 75 and this Sigma 28 to 70. Now, for me, between these two lenses, the choice was pretty clear because the Sigma 28 to 70 was significantly smaller, uh, just as sharp, if not sharper. And, you know, the five millimeter extra reach didn't really matter to me all that much. So I would take the size trade off any day of the week. Now, my hesitations, what were my hesitations going into this lens? Was the 28 millimeter going to be wide enough? I know a lot of people have mentioned in the reviews that they were frustrated that they only start at 28 millimeters with this lens and the Tamron. And also, would it be good enough at high ISOs? What, you know, would the image quality hold up? Because uh, for all intents and purposes, this would be considered a pro level zoom, right? Let's get into unboxing this thing and show you guys what it comes with. And then I will show you some sample images from the wrestling event where we'll look at lens sharpness, lens performance, build quality, etc., etc. as usual with super very ultra scientific tests that will prove everything beyond a shadow of a doubt. All right, let's get this thing open and show you guys what comes in the box. Sony 28 to 70 DGDN as you can see. This is all the warranty information which we don't really care about right now. We open this guy out and all you have straight in the box is the lens itself. In addition to the lens, you have a plastic lens hood, typical Sigma quality. Uh, I would say it's a pretty solid feeling lens hood. Now, one of the things that does annoy me about Sigma's lens hood, I had this on the 16 mil F1.4 for Sony APS-C as well is this rubber ring at the bottom of the lens hood. And the reason that it's annoying is because it can start to look dirty really fast and really easily. So not the best for, for that reason, but in terms of build quality, it's a really solid lens hood. As you can see, there's very little flex to it. So uh, really nice lens hood there. I spent way too much time talking about the lens hood of this lens. Um, and there is the lens itself. Now, as you can see, um, typical Sigma quality here um, comes with two lens caps and typical Sigma front lens cap. And there is the lens element uh, with all the various technologically advanced coatings that Sigma uses. Now, I got to say two things about holding this lens in my hands. One is that the build feels actually better in person, especially the zoom ring with the rubberized grip. It just feels really nice. It's nicely dampened. It just feels great to use. Now the focus ring is obviously plastic instead of rubber and it feels more plasticky, but it's still nicely dampened and very, very smooth to use. But honestly, I won't be using uh, manual focus all that much on this lens. If I do need to use it, there is a handy little switch, which is nice. It's one of the things 
with Sigma that I've noticed as a differentiator between Sigma and Tamron, right? Tamron's products feel okay. And the image quality that they produce is, is terrific for the most part, especially for the price. But Sigma's build quality and the way they feel in the hand and when you're using them is just a notch above Tamron's. And it's one of the reasons why I always preferred Sigma's products, despite the fact that they're larger, which is why I've been avoiding the full frame products until this guy. And the other thing I notice right away when I pick this lens up is how small it is. Like I know everybody talks about its size and how lightweight and tiny it is, but man, this thing is really, really small. Hang on a second. So just for comparison's sake, here's the A6000 with the kit lens on it. And here's the Sigma 28 to 70. It's a really, really tiny lens and it doesn't weigh a whole lot either. I believe it's 470 grams if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, super lightweight lens, super great feeling, super nice build quality. Um, no complaints here. So without further ado, let's check out how this lens did during that wrestling event. Now, these first few images that I'm going to present are all um, based on the ISO, of course, and I have them in order from the highest to the lowest. So we're going to start with 10,000 ISO. Now, 10,000 ISO, you can see the image is quite noisy, but if we punch in, you can see the sharpness is definitely there. The detail is definitely there. I mean, the lens did a great job, despite the fact that it was at 10,000 ISO uh, and it was quite dark down here um, from a ter in terms of available light. So did a really good job there. Uh, here we're moving during their match, the same two guys. Uh, now we're at ISO 8000. And the reason why I was shooting at ISO uh, at high ISOs very often is obviously because I needed a higher shutter speed to freeze the action um, and they were moving quite quickly, right? So this one was shot at 1 over 800 at f2.8 ISO 8000. And you can see uh, as we punch in, the sharpness is there, the detail is there. It is, you know, quite noisy. But you'll see in subsequent photos that as the ISO gets lower, the sharpness drastically increases. And we can see that already here at ISO 6400. Now, this photo, uh, an interesting thing to point out here is the only time the autofocus, we're going to cover autofocus more in detail later, but the only time the autofocus kind of struggled is when I uh, was shooting through the ropes like I was here. So it still picked up the face. The face tracking did work, but there were times where it would focus either on the front or the back ropes for some reason. Um, but, you know, overall, it didn't miss too often, but I just wanted to point that out. As we go down to ISO 5000 here, you can see as we punch in, sharpness and detail are fantastic. This is at 67.4 millimeters. So if you're curious about sharpness at the long end, uh, it does a really, really good job. Uh, and this is one case where it did focus on the face perfectly, right? So um, really good job there at ISO 5000. And now we're going down to ISO 3200 uh, in relatively... Um, challenging conditions in terms of contrast and stuff like that but as you punch in you can see now we're starting to see a lot of detail now that the noise is almost gone i mean down to every hair on his beard on the hair sticking out of his head over here um really really nice performance sharpness wise and color rendition is fantastic on this lens as well and at iso 2000 now you can see tons of detail as we're at 100 percent crop here uh everything from the microphone to the eyes to the hair it's uh, really fantastically um, sharp at this ISO and below. So next, we're going to talk about the focal length. Uh, as I said, there are a lot of people that are complaining that it's 28 millimeters, but here's what I found. Now, with this image, I shot it with my Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 G because I didn't think that the Sigma at 28 mils would be wide enough to capture all three podiums in this setup in the ring. So the 20 millimeter wide angle worked well. I didn't want to take the chance and miss the shot, right? But what happened, uh, interestingly, is that on the final image after editing it, I did crop it. And as you can see, I cropped in a significant amount, I would say, from the 20 uh, millimeter, right? And this makes me think that with the 28, I probably could have gotten the shot that I wanted. So it's probably not as big of a deal as a lot of people say it is. So here's 20 and here's the crop 20. 20 and crop 20. Again, these were shot with a Sony 20 millimeter, but just to illustrate the difference of what I probably could have used the 28 millimeter for, I probably didn't need to change lenses, but I did nonetheless. Now, sticking with the focal length theme, uh, what we're going to look at now 
is I was shooting the Samyang slash Rokin on 75 millimeter full frame lens on my Sony a6000. Um, mostly because I wanted the extra reach and I wanted to compare what would I get with the 70 millimeter on full frame versus the 75. So let's check that out. This shot here, as you can see, was shot with a 28 to 70 at 67 millimeters. So almost at the full uh, range of the lens. And it did a pretty good job of punching in. And as you can see, even at that focal range at ISO 3200, it gave me a good amount of detail, uh, nice image, good contrast, all good here. Now, this image, I did crop in like this in the final version of it, in the edited version. So as you can see the before and after, it is cropped in quite significantly, I would say. Now, to get this equivalent focal length, this is the Samyang 75mm f1.8 on the Sony a6000. Now, this is about 107.5 uh, equivalent on full frame. So if we're comparing the field of view of 107.5 versus... 67 millimeters on the sigma this is the difference right here just so you guys know so it does allow you to punch in more obviously this is shot at f2 that's another difference even with a 24 megapixel sensor on the sony a7c that 70 mil is still plenty long for this thing and i probably didn't really need the 75 on the um sony a6000 where i'm thinking next time is I might go with a wide angle lens instead, um, probably something in the 12 to 14 range on APS-C as my second camera instead of the telephoto because uh, it does give me the leeway to crop, especially if the images are being used online, right? And this is another example of the crop. This is the final edited image versus the original unedited, again, at 70 mils. So you can see the difference here. I'm able to crop without losing much quality and still get a nice image, right? And of course, at 70 mil, as you can see again, sharpness is there, detail is there, the images look absolutely fantastic. Here's another example of a slightly uh, lower light with a slower shutter speed. And it's one of my favorite images that I caught uh, that night, actually. For those of you who want to check him out, this is Aiden Prince. Uh, you can check out his Instagram tag right here. And this was shot at 1 over 320, f2.8 ISO 2000. I was right at the edge of the stage where they were making their entrance here. And as you can see, uh, the detail, again, is really, really good with this lens. Uh, no complaints here. Super sharp, super nice, uh, super great colors. No complaints at all. Now, this next series of images is basically to test autofocus. I will show you guys uh, what the performance is like. The a7C, of course, has a fantastic autofocus system. And I wanted to see, could a budget standard zoom keep up with the a7C? Here, I was uh, probably about 25, 30 feet away from this ring post, slightly raised. I was on a couple of steps. And as you can see, as I punch in, the autofocus worked fantastic. And uh, when he picked him up to choke slam him over here, um, he was going pretty fast, as you can see by his hair swinging in the air. But the lens did a good job of keeping focus where I wanted it and keeping track. And that's what this uh, next series of images is for now. I was shooting these at 28 mil on continuous autofocus. And as you can see, as I go through the sequence of images. So for action shots, the lens definitely keeps up with something like the A7C in order to keep the focus exactly where you want it. And now the next series of images, there's only four of them, are some of my favorite images just to show you guys a bit of a sample of some of my favorites and what this lens is generally capable of. These are edited, by the way, so this is um, um, post-processed images. But just to give you an idea of what the final result could look like in a real-world scenario like this. So, uh, you know, for my money, these images are absolutely fantastic. Sharp, detailed, even at a high ISO. Autofocus didn't miss a beat. So, yeah, it didn't it didn't really uh, limit me, the 28 millimeters. I thought it would a lot more. But all in all, the Sigma 28-70 to f2.8 DGDN lens... Uh, is a piece of kit that basically got out of my way and allowed me to capture the images that I wanted to capture, which is all you can ask for from a lens, I think. I do wish it had a little bit better weather sealing within the barrel because it only has a gasket on the lens mount. But how often am I going to shoot in the rain? I'm not too sure about that. So I'm willing to make that that compromise, to be honest. So as a pairing with the a7C, this lens is uh, absolutely fantastic for these focal lengths. If you're looking for a standard zoom at f2.8, definitely check it out. 
uh, you will not be disappointed. If this video helped you make a purchasing decision or gave you some information you didn't previously have, consider giving it a like so that more people can get said information. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.